All right, let's uh, get started right from where we left off on the last video. You can see we still have the same PLC. It's powered up, it's connected, and uh, it's uh, turned on. Where I don't have any outputs connected to it, uh, no physical outputs, no push buttons, no lights. And the reason for that is I'm trying to keep this class as cheap as possible so that you can learn as much programming and get started without having to spend uh, much money for the hardware for the parts. <clears throat> like I said, the software is free. The uh, technical support is free. Hopefully you won't uh, need any of that. And uh, you need the interface cable to program. You'll need some type of a power supply. I've got one of these uh, inexpensive ones from uh, Automation Direct connected to the, plic, uh, to the click. And um, <clears throat> then you need a CPU. Go back to the other videos and you can see which CPU we're using and so forth. Okay, now that we're back on the computer, this is the intersection that we'll be programming the red light for. East and west is Elm Street. North and south is Oak Street. The red light will be in the center. And there are no turn lanes. There's no sensors to detect that a car is at the red light. So therefore, this intersection, the red light, will run strictly on a timer. And when <clears throat> east or west Elm Street is red, that means both, ha both sides have to be red. And the same with Oak Street. If Oak Street North is red, then Oak Street South side is red as well. <clears throat> Therefore, the reds, the greens, and the yellows for each street will be in parallel. And if you think you know a red light, you probably realize you don't when you start to program one. You can see in this program that I've made uh, quite a few changes. I went ahead and put the most simple red light configuration uh, in. and But the top three rungs here don't have anything to do with the red light. They're really just for display. You can see in column A right here coming down, we have the light indications for Elm Street East, red, Elm Street East, yellow, Elm Street East, green. And in column B, we have that the same thing for Elm Street West. We have red, yellow, and green. And then column C is oak, um, north oak, red, yellow, and green, and south oak, or oak south, red, yellow, and green. Now, I have these three outputs over here, C120, C121, and C122. They're just there because I have to have something to close out the rung. I can't just have these bits sitting there waiting for a command and then when it, the program gets to the end of the rung, there's nothing there, I would get a syntax error. So I have to have something there. These uh, contacts or these uh, bits will not be used anywhere else in the program. Like I said, these are just for display. Now I have a timer just below that. I, uh, actually, I've got a NOP right here, which means no operation. Uh, I can take this one out, but I left it in there just for a light, slight separation between what we're displaying up here and the actual functioning or controlling of the red light itself. So here you see we have a stoplight timer that's set for 30 seconds. You see it says seconds up here, and the set point is at 30. And you can see the actual timer data one value is 25, 27, 28, 29, 30, and then it resets. And it resets, like we said before in the end of the last video, when it reaches the set point, this T1 energizes, which comes back and causes this to open up so that the next time the program comes back through, this is open, we lose the enable on the timer, and this timer is not retained, it's not retaining its value, therefore the uh, data, uh, current data in TD1 goes to zero. The next time it comes around, or at that time, uh, this T1 is de-energized because it's no longer at the set point. The next time we go through the loop, come back up to the top, and it comes back down to this rung, it says, oh, stoplight timer T1 is not energized, therefore it enables the set point or the input. So the timer is timing. <clears throat> the timer will only time when the PLC is processing this rung by rung. And we'll show you something about that if you do a timer in subroutines that you have to be careful so that your time doesn't get messed up or you get out of sync. Moving down, you can see that this 30 second timer, I'm doing a compare right here. I'm comparing uh, this value, TD1, 
uh, against a constant of 20. So I'm saying if TD1 is less than 20, then I want to turn on this output, which is C11, and I call it green. That means green lights will be turned on somewhere. On the next rung, I'm doing something very, very similar. I'm doing um, another compare also against TD1. That's the timer value in TD1. I'm saying if it's equal to or greater than 20, then I want to turn on the yellow lights. Now, the reason I don't need anything for red lights is if I have a green light on one street, I have to have red lights on the other street. So now I just have to keep up with which street that I'm controlling at the time. So I do that by counting the timer. The first time the timer comes through, <clears throat> it sets a bit here and it causes it to count up. The set point on this counter is 2. The current value is 1. When the timer reaches 30, then what happens is this contact will close for that instant and when it does, the counter will increment by 1. So you can see right now it just incremented. The value on TD1 just reset back to 0 because it hit 30. The counter value went to 0 because it reset when the counter reached its set point. Because the way I'm resetting the timer here using its own bit to come back and reset it is the same thing I'm doing down here on the counter. I'm using the output from CT1, counter number 1, and I'm coming back and say, okay, if it's got to its um, set point value, then I want to enable the reset down here. And this is an up counter. It's not counting down. It could count up and down. It just depends on how we set the counter. And we'll get into that when we re, um, rebuild this step by step. Also down here, I'm checking the, the counter value. If the counter is equal to a zero, that means we're in the first cycle of the 30 second timer, then Elm Street lights are being controlled. If uh, the next rung is if it's greater than zero or equal to one, excuse me, because the only two values I have in this counter is zero and one. If it reaches two, it resets itself. So if it's equal to one, then I'm controlling the Oak Street lights. So I'm using one timer to control both lights. So both lights will have exactly the same time. Now then, going back to that, I say, if I'm controlling Elm Street lights, right here you saw C14 just now uh, turned off and C15 went on. If I'm controlling Elm Street lights, this would be closed and then that would force the Oak Street North light to be red and the Oak Street South light to be red. Remember, I said they would have to be in parallel. And the same is true if I'm controlling the Oak Street lights. That means the Elm Street lights, east and west, both would be red, would be turned on. Now then, what about the greens and the yellows? If I have green turned on, because I'm in the first 20 seconds of my timer, and I'm controlling Elm Street lights, both of these are enabled, therefore, I would have... Elm Street East Green and Elm Street West Green. And you just saw that they just changed and the yellow lights came on. Now I'm doing the same thing on the next rung, rung 14. If I'm controlling the, green, uh, the yellows and I'm controlling Elm Street, then Elm Street's East light would be yellow and Elm Street West light would be yellow. Then for a separation, I put in an NOP, a no operation rung, just to separate to make it easier to say this is this light and this is the next rungs are the next light. Rung 16, you can see if I'm controlling green lights and I'm controlling Oak Street lights, then the Oak Street North light would be green and so so with the South light. The same thing is true again for the yellow. It's exactly the same as what I did for the other light. If I'm controlling the yellows and I'm controlling Oak Street light, then I would get these two outputs uh, Oak Street North and Oak, uh, Yellow and Oak Street South Yellow. And that's the end of the program. Now that's 18 rungs. And you can see we've got several contacts. We've got some timers. We have some compare bits and so forth. Now then, for example, if I want to take this, say I've just created this, and I want to write the project into the PLC like we've done before in the past. First thing it does is it does a syntax check. All right, and then 
it comes over to this. This tells me what I have in the computer. This on the right side tells me what I have in the PLC. You can see this is only 1%. 1% of the, the steps that we could have in here. We still have 7,919 steps available. Now, each one of these is a step. This is a wrong identifier. This is a, a fun, uh, a, uh, excuse, excuse me, an instruction or a function. It could be called either one. An instruction, 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 output. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six steps for this one rung. So you, some rungs don't have that much. Other rungs have more. So you can see I get down to this area right in here. My end is at 18. If we have that much space, I could easily have say 1,500 rungs in this program. And I tell you, to scroll through 1,500 rungs would take a long time. And if you're trying to find where you turn on this or turn on that, it becomes very difficult if you have everything in one program, in your main program. So therefore, we have subroutines. So if I come over here, right-click, and I say add a new subroutine, I will call this one light display. Now I have a, a subroutine. Going back to the main program, up to the top, if I wanted to separate this out so that it looks cleaner and I don't see that much, I cannot go and just grab, grab this, go down and shift, hold the shift key down and do this. It will not let me um, do more than one rung at a time. But I can do a, a cut, and I can come over here, and I right-click on this one and do a paste. So now then, I'll do a cut again. I'll take out what was rung number two. And I'll come over here to rung number two, and I'll right-click, and I'll do a paste again. Then I'll come back into the main program. I'll right-click one more time to a cut, and go down into the this, right-click on uh, rung number three, and I'll do a paste. And this is all I want to have in this, just so that I could come here and just watch just what the lights are doing. But I have to have a return to tell it this is the end of the subroutine. Return back or go back to the main program. So I'll put that in. Now then, in the main program, you see now the first thing I have is a no operation. I can take that out as well. It's not needed. <clears throat> so now then, I'm going to uh, do a transfer, write project into the PLC. Down here, new project one, zero errors, zero warnings. Here you can see where this is what's in the computer. This is what's in the, the PLC, CPU. So now I want to click OK. Yes, I have to stop. Uh, let me go back, uh, put it back in the monitor mode. So now we're monitoring. You can see my counter is up at the top now. It's continuing to count. It resets every 30 seconds. And every... Um, Every time it goes through a scan, every time it goes through a scan, it's processing all of these, and it gets down to the end down here, and we are not telling it to go to the subroutine, are we? Here's our subroutine. Nothing, oh, it is happening. No, it's not. <laughs> well, hang on, let me see. I don't know if it is or not. I don't have a call in here to go to the subroutine. Let's do a call to go to the subroutine. It's updating those values is, uh, because um, it's a little difficult to explain. Let me go ahead and uh, insert um, a rung before my cursor. And on that rung, I'm going to do a call. And the call is going to be for light display. There, that calls the subroutine at the end of processing this. So now then, I'll tell it to uh, transfer. Right project into PLC. <clears throat> now, going back into the subroutine, we're calling the subroutine here, but you see there's nothing changed on this. If there's no way I can have uh, all four red lights on at the same time. So unless we do something special where we tell it, okay, one red light turns, uh, before one can turn green, we have to have all of them red for, say, two seconds or something like that just to make sure everybody's had time to clear the intersection. 
and then we could possibly have all of these uh, energized at the same time. Right now, it's either these two energized or these two energized. So therefore, where we are right now, this output would never update, and this one would, and this one wouldn't either. Now, I was not calling the program, so this was not being processed, but these values were changing in the main program, not in the sub uh, program, subroutine. So in the main program, these values were changing. So what it's doing, it was still displaying and showing you what the values were, but there was nothing to update over here. So therefore, it wasn't necessary for me to put a call in just to be able to display and show you what the red lights are doing, if you can follow what I'm saying here. Anyway, <clears throat> that uh, takes care of this right here. Um, what I'd like to do now is for us to uh, start over. I'm going to save this uh, project as uh, red light one. Red light one. I guess I already had one named that and I didn't realize it. So, <clears throat> now that I've got this saved as red light one, I'm going to. Um, File open, and I'm going to open um, new project one. Oh, I already had that in there, didn't I? Okay, so now that I'm going to come in and just start deleting, deleting these rows. We're going to recreate this rung, uh, row, rung by rung. There. And the subroutine we will delete as well. Yes. So now we're back to ground zero. I want to go into the address picker so I can show you what I did to begin with because I wanted to leave this in so I just don't have to retype all of this. In the control relays, that's what they call these, the, uh, the control bits. <clears throat> Here you can see 11, 12, and 13, I've got his green, yellow, and red. <clears throat> I could actually take this off of the uh, red, I believe. I'm not using that one anymore. Um, and then I wrote one in here for C14 for Elm Street uh, Light and uh, Oak Street Light. That's saying which one we're uh, actually controlling at the time, which one's going through the green and yellow phase. And <clears throat> then also in here, at the 100s, I did the full setup that we would need for labeling for nicknames for uh, each uh, red light. You can see I've got red, yellow, green, and turn. We don't have the turn yet, but we will have it later. Uh, for uh, Elm East and Elm West, red, yellow, green, and turn. And then I did the same thing for the uh, Oak Street. Now you'll notice I started off here on C101, but down here, on Oak, I did C1101, and that's because I knew I was going to use less than 10 of these bits, but when I programmed one in, I wanted to be able to copy and paste and just go in and change one number to have the, the same, um, so I don't have to actually type in every single piece in there. I can copy and paste some rungs and just change some of the uh, contact, uh, contact bits. <clears throat> now on the timer, on here, you see I've still got my time in, uh, my, excuse me, my nickname in on stoplight timer. And on the counter, I never labeled the counter. All right, and this counter, we'll call it cycle counter, I guess. Cycle count. So this cycle count uh, tells me which, uh, which I'm cycling. I'll cycle from Elm Street to Oak Street to Elm Street to Oak Street, back and forth. All right. I tell you what, I think this is enough uh, for this video. We're running into quite a few minutes. So the next video, we'll go ahead and we'll jump straight into recreating what we just went over. I'll see you there.